Welcome to Volume 3 of the Foxes Video Mag and the start of a new era and a new manager, Mark McGee. Following the controversial exit of Brian Little, McGee was the man given the challenge of staging a Premiership rescue mission. Yeah, well, I accepted that when I took the position, that uh, they were in a difficult position, you know, but you uh, can be sure that I looked at every aspect of it, I analysed uh, results and uh, uh, analysed the, the, the fixtures, and uh, I'm quite sure that I'm quite confident that eventually we can achieve the number of points needed. The battle for survival began with a brave display as Premiership leaders Blackburn Rovers. But the first real highlight for the new boss was a brilliant fight back against the champions at Old Trafford. Coming up, action from both the League and the FA Cup, where the Foxes kicked off with a win against Jan killing hopefuls Enfield. Good ball from Hale, finds Roberts who's moved over on this near side, Oldfield wants it quickly. Shot comes in, oh, great, a great strike from David Oldfield. As well as keeping you up to date with action on the field, we've also got a special feature on events behind the scenes. The opening of the new Foxes Fitness Centre provided a spot of light relief for some familiar faces. Now, Birch, people used to talk about your lack of first touch. You've got a bit of rhythm out there in the aerobic oh. sessions, haven't you? Well, it's, it's, you know, if you've got it, you've got to flaunt it, mate. It's as simple as that. I mean, I was... Uh, I was overcome out there, it was just that you never lose that sort of touch. It was like being down at uh, the Mecca in the 70s. It all came back to... Grannies? Uh, well, even Grannies then, I was old enough to remember Grannies on London Road. VIP cards came out. Now, the lads are taking me down to Crystal Saturday night because they were so, uh, you know, they were so impressed with the footwork. We pick up the story of the season against Newcastle. Behind the scenes, speculation was mounting that Mark McGee was lined up to fill the managerial hot seat. Meanwhile, the Magpies were destined to get the better of the Foxes for the second time. Now he, again, Watson is the target and getting up there, and that's an awkward one, and a flying save in the end by Kevin Paul. Paul, <laughs> the applause there. Watson on the wrong side of the defender and angled it over Paul, who had to pull out an acrobatic response. Corner taken and knocked across there. And blasted in there by Albert. Philippe Albert. 1 0 to Newcastle then. 32 minutes gone. And Philippe Albert gets his first Premiership goal. Scott really smacked it into the back of the net. Ball, absolutely no chance. Trying to turn around the outside, Oldfield now for Leicester. And hit the angle there and could have gone absolutely anywhere. It fell to the defender, but it was a sharp effort. And Cernicek was much relieved to see it hit the woodwork. Oh, an early scare there for Newcastle in this second half. Oldfield getting face on with the goal. Maybe got a deflection off Peacock as well. And fell to Watson, fortunately for Newcastle. Draper looking to switch the play at first. Out wide is Lee Philpott. Portugal's gone to close him down now. Phil Pop with a second attempt at it. Cernicic thinks about coming there at Oldfield, and that's an equaliser. David Oldfield for 1 1. And Oldfield, who only moments earlier rattled the woodwork, this time gets his goal. Good header in front of the defender and Cernicek left out of the equation.
Fox with the corner kick. Newcastle looking for a quick response. Out to Beardsley, but Draper was there. And Beresford finding Fox out wide. Howie coming in there. Terrific goal. Steve Howie. Well, the centre halves are having their day today. Really needs Peacock to get in on the act now. Albert, the first one, and now it's Howie. Fox, another excellent cross. That was Howie's all the way. And the New England international gets his goal. Well, what the Newcastle conjure up here? Albert and Beresford. Another booking. Mr. Willard will need a new notebook for Christmas. The way he's going on. Oldfield in there now. I like counting that six books, but it wasn't easy to keep up at one stage. Going with the football now. Albert. What a tremendous free kick! Albert gets his second, and they don't come any better, do they? Well, Keegan off his feet, Beardsley chased to congratulate him. And thunderous applause for a thunderous effort there. Five days later, Mark McGee was finally installed as City's new manager. McGee and his right-hand man, Colin Lee, both quit First Division Reading to form Filbert Street's new managerial double act. You'd have to say at this stage it's a meteoric rise because, you know, third or fourth year management and here a chance in the Premiership, but of course it brings its problems with the position Leicester are in. Yeah, well, I accepted that when I took the position that uh, they were in a difficult position, you know, but uh, you can be sure that I looked at every aspect of it, I analysed uh, results and uh, uh, analysed the, the, the fixtures and I'm quite sure that and quite confident that eventually we can achieve the number of points needed. You were very honest in the press interviews about, you know, Reading tried so hard to keep you. It went on deep into the night, and I think you left that meeting actually believing you'd stay at Elm Park, but then you, you woke up with different thoughts. Well, I didn't leave the meeting because it was at my house. Uh, <laughs> the chairman left and left me thinking I was probably going to stay, but uh, that's been well uh, documented already. I've accepted that I changed my mind uh, during the night, and uh, I've said it already. I still believe I had the right to do that. Um, I'm here now uh, facing Blackburn today. Uh, we've done the work that we could in the two days we've been here already, uh, and we'll do more during the game. We'll do more at half-time, and hopefully we'll get a result. How many of the players would you have known from before, or only from afar, as it were? Yeah, I know all the players from afar. You know, one or two of them, obviously, I've seen more of. Um, but uh, it doesn't take long, and uh, people have been a great help. People around the club that know the players have given us a lot of information. Um, I've tried to use that to put together a team today that I hope will give Blackburn problems. And just coming in, it, uh, it was a very, very warm welcome for you. I mean, we're talking a while before the uh, kickoff, but the fans obviously felt they needed a boost after Brian Little going so suddenly. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I hope that uh, my arrival has given them a boost, but uh, I've said it as well that uh, I don't expect, uh, and I'm not the type to come out here and look for some sort of fanfare. Um, I'll slip as quietly into the dugout as I can, uh, and then maybe in six months' time, if we keep this team in the Premier League, then I'll go out there and take a bow. McGee's reign began with the Filbert Street showdown with high-flying Blackburn Rovers. McGee had been given just 48 hours to prepare his side for battle against the Premiership's top club. Nonetheless, McGee's change of tactics succeeded in silencing the league's deadliest strike force. Uh, ball forward uh, by Thompson. Sherwood. Carroll across to Berg, and it was barely hard enough. Now it's Pierce, and he lost out to a foot stretched out by Oldfield. But recovers. Atkins, it was. Uh... to Grayson Blake playing it out wide Bit of enterprise by Simon Grayson and 
Once again, Draper shows his skill on the ball, but runs into one man too many. Ripley with Shearer to his right. Good cross. Great save. Paul getting hands to the header from Sutton. And what a beautiful cross it was, too. The relationship between these two blossoms with every game. 37 goals between them. And the confidence that that breeds is apparent in virtually every attack. Very good save, though, from Kevin Poole. Thompson. Oldfield asking for it, goes instead to Philpott. Blake have made a run through the middle. Draper has the ball. Grayson in again. Thompson. Passing has got to be going somewhere, otherwise Blackburn will just wait until eventually one goes astray, as it did then, and now Ripley attacks. Sutton. To me as though Shearer was offside. The flag stayed down. No harm done. headed by uh, Whitler across his own penalty area, but Blake clears, and clears well. Oldfield, uh, Draper rather, takes it on to Oldfield. Linesman signalled for the push by Sherwood on Thompson. with the free kick and that's a goal kick Better by Blake well wide played very well as an emergency fullback for half a dozen games or so but he's really a midfield player Berg plenty of room ahead of him Shearer had come short Ripley's on the touchline number seven Berg supporting. Plenty of movement here. Nice dummy by Sutton. And still they may get something. Berg is there. He's taken it too wide and can't pull it back. There was some beautiful, intricate play there. And Ripley, at the end of it, just uh, forced wide, put it into the side netting. Ripley seemed then to have the chance to cut it back. Couldn't do it. Thompson. Profit. Sherwood. Control let him down again. It's the uh, result of the collision when uh, Whitlow got involved with uh, Philpot, I think it was.
a bit short. Blake couldn't quite get there. All the so could do was concede the throw in. Draper's cross blocked by Sherwood. It's a bad ball by uh, Grayson. Here are the Lone Ranger. And applause for Simon Grace. Oh, Ripley. And towards Shearer, knocked down for Sutton, and Sutton over the top. Two goal scorers from Blackburn have had their chances today. And both have leaned away from them with that result. Liverpool arrived at Filbert Street without a Premiership win since early November. It was the start of a perfect Christmas for the Merseysiders, but City did have their chance. Coming up to 10 minutes on the watch. Leicester City in 21st position, nil. Liverpool, fifth place in the table, nil. Header away, picked up by Blake. Can Grayson get there first? He can, but uh, Bjornby blocked it. And Blake will start again by finding Hill. Great ball from Hill if Philpott can get there first. And wins the corner. Robbie Jones didn't like the decision, but uh, Gerald Ashby was right on the spot. And Steve Thompson will go across to take it. But this time, Willis has joined Whitlow inside the Liverpool penalty area, just on the edge of the 18-yard box. Cross comes in, headed away. Draper with a shot. Oh, goodness me. What happened there? Mark Draper lined it up, teed it up. It looked to all intents and purposes. It was aimed for the bottom right-hand corner. And it just took a wicked deflection. Well, the chances, albeit half chances, are being created, but uh, that final ball at the moment from both sides just leaving a little bit to be desired. Fowler, tenacious, plays it back to Redknapp, scales. Good running by Rush, back with McManaman, into Fowler. Shot, oh, tremendous save from Paul. Well, that's the first we've seen of Robbie Fowler in shooting action. A lovely move, worked out well. Rush laid it off, Fowler hit it from just outside the box. And Kevin Paul flew across his goal to turn it past. Mistake from Blake, McManaman. Grayson brings him down, immediately gets a yellow card. And that's the first yellow card of the afternoon. Five minutes gone in the second half. So Barnes with the free kick. Ten yards outside the Leicester penalty area. Lays it to Ruddock. Shot comes in. Pull goal! Oh, goes down. In fact, whether Paul got a touch to that, I don't know. He didn't think he did. Liverpool just starting to push forward a little bit more at the early, in the early stages of the second half. Just trying to unsettle Leicester. 
Great ball from Jones. Can Redknapp get the cross in? No, he can't because uh, Whitlow gets in the way. Jones with the throw. Scales again with time and space. Redknapp to the byline. Whitlow's across. Liverpool corner. And Leicester just can't get this ball at the moment. Up and away. Bjornby places it deliberately on the D. Ruddock's up there, so is Scales. Cross comes in left-footed. Oh, Scales got in behind uh, David Oldfield, but Oldfield just got a touch at the right minute. And it flew over the top of Kevin Poole's goal. Corner on the other side. And Jamie Redknapp will cross, pop over to take it. Good defensive covering there from David Oldfield. So Redknapp again, right footed, swings it in. Scales gets up off the top of his head, back with Rush. Barnes. McManaman. Oh, breaks through. Still has it. Shot comes in, great save from Paul. Oh, Steve McManaman did everything right there. Lovely weaving run. Gets the ball back from Redknapp. Forward, could have shot there. Decides to drag it past one, two players. Makes space, Paul had the angle covered. Hill moving forward positively. James off his line. Only as far as Whitlow. Good turn from Thompson. Lovely bit of ball skill from Draper. Takes the free kick, finds Carr. Cross comes in. Ruddex there. Gets there before Oldfield. Heads it away. Out of the ground. So we'll need a new football. Lovely cross. Ruddex in the right place at the right time. So Leicester's first corner of this second half. Phil Potts there with Thompson. Quickly taken. Back to Blake. Good ball inside to Phil Pot. Pull down, penalty. Well, that was a well worked corner. Quickly taken. Thompson into Phil Pot. Went past Bab. No question. And so, after absorbing an awful lot of pressure, Steve Thompson who has yet to get on the score sheet, given the opportunity to put Leicester in the lead. Thompson against James. Oh, James saves it, tremendous save. Thompson hit it well, can't believe it. James guessed correctly and palmed it away. Neil Ruddick. Standing over the ball. In fact, uh, Ruddick might even have a go from there. He does, takes a deflection. Off the Leicester wall, Liverpool corner. Bjornby will take. It was a fairly optimistic shot from Ruddick. But uh, Liverpool come away with a corner. Bjornby in with the left foot. Ruddick gets up, still there. Blake heads it away. In fact, the referee has given a penalty. Well, that looked very innocuous to me. Let's have another look at it. The cross comes in. Ruddock gets up well. Cross comes back in. Now, we still can't see what that was for. So, a penalty at the Leicester end, and it's going to be Robbie Fowler 
against Kevin Paul. And it's there, hammered in high and hard to Paul's left. And Liverpool take the lead. Liverpool get out of trouble so well. From one side of the field to the other, back with McManaman. Bjornby's there if he wants him. He does. Barnes always available. And Leicester just can't get this ball. Barnes flicks it through all. Lovely bit of skill from McManaman. Into Barnes. Cross comes in, Rush is there! Ian Rush at the near post. Gets goal number 11. And Leicester go two behind with 13 minutes to go. Well, things really have just not gone Leicester's way. Maybe they can salvage something in these last eight minutes or so. Good turn from Bab. McManaman, just a little layoff. Agnew comes in. In fact, he has been sent off. It wasn't... Agnew at the end, it was Simon Grayson. Now, Grayson has already been booked. Grayson in a challenge there. Oh, he did, yes. He did go over the top a little bit. So, four minutes to go. Leicester City nil, Liverpool two. This Boxing Day crowd that came full of expectation from for an encouraging Leicester performance really will go away feeling extremely disappointed. Agnew, little flick on, and it's in. Ewan Roberts has given Leicester City a little bit of hope. His fourth goal of the season. Roberts himself collects the ball, takes it back to the centre circle. Agnew with a free kick. Roberts chains off his line, stranded in no man's land. And Roberts header nestles firmly in the back of the net. This has got to be Leicester's last chance as Hill comes forward. Oldfield peels away to the right, ball with Draper. Into Roberts, Agnew. Oldfield, far side, cross comes in. Oh, tremendous save from David James. And Mark Blake can't believe it. Ewan Roberts' late goal set up an exciting finish. But Steve Thompson's penalty miss had proved costly. Who knows what would have happened had Tomo's 63rd minute kick opened the scoring. After home matches with Blackburn and Liverpool came an even more daunting challenge against defending champions Manchester United at Old Trafford. On paper, the Foxes had no chance but McGee's men showed admirable qualities to earn a morale-boosting result. Cantona. Here's Keane. Danger again, Cantona. To McClare wants it pulled back, Keane's coming in. And they've got it out from underneath the bar. Keane thought his shirt was pulled in the process. Agnew was back there helping, and somehow or other, Leicester had men on the line. It's a corner. And Pallister at the near post as Paul comes to punch. Giggs. Another corner. Came off Colin Hill this time. These are anxious early moments for Leicester City. Oh, 
Christ is there again, and so was Paul. And Alex Ferguson, whose relationship with Mark McGee has obviously provided quite a backlog for this game. Halfway through the first half here at Old Trafford, and Leicester at the moment holding their own. Cantonar too, which is uh, more than half the battle with Manchester United, you sometimes feel. He hasn't got into the game yet. And here's Giggs. did that well, Hughes completely missed it, but here's Kanchelskis. Keane. They're all waiting, Hughes nearly there again. But uh, the first chance was the best. And he just struck thin air, really. Here's Draper for Leicester. Thompson. Philpott. Well, that's the sort of service that uh, Giggs would prefer, the ball thrown to him instantly by Walsh. And it starts an attack which continues with Cantona, who was shadowed there by Willis, slowed him up a little bit, Neville. Making the extra man down the right and finding Cantona. Levels further down that wing than Kanchelskis at the moment. Cantona is foul. And that's going to be a free kick in dangerous territory. Wicklow not too happy about it, but uh, the referee was well positioned. And uh, so too now will be the likes of Pallister and Bruce. Giggs will take it. Pallister was up, it's come out to Brian McClare. In by Hughes. Oh, and Roy Keane coming in. And good block by Kevin Poole. Keane stole it on the blind side of the defence. Nobody picked him up except the goalkeeper. Comes out to McClare. Hughes with a swivel, lovely reverse ball in fact. Look at that. Again, some credit to Leicester's defenders, they're blocking the uh, avenues effectively at the moment. Wicklow, in fact, is confident enough to take on... Well, maybe he was too confident, he was. This is Cantona to Hughes, Kanchelskis gets pulling away! Good save, Paul. Kanchelskis struck it. Wicklow was in the process of trying to dribble around two or three United players there. He got past two of them, then got unlucky. So it's a corner. Bruce, Pallister, goal kick. Well, there, Hill, Hill was stretching. The footing again there is by Hughes. Kanchelskis, it's not a good angle for a shot, is it, in fairness? So is Keane there coming in. But this is Agnew, energetic performer in midfield for Leicester. And he's got help here on both sides. Thompson to Oldfield. Draper's well forward here too for Leicester. And it's Thompson. And it's not far away. It opened up quite nicely there for uh, Steve Thompson. Set up actually by David Oldfield. It was a good ball, played square, and they hadn't really shut him down. And this is now a test of Manchester United's imagination rather than their energy. They've got to try and find a more devious route through the defence, and they may have found it here with Giggs. 
Yes, they have, and he's in. Ryan Giggs has missed it. Well, just when they had the first sight of goal, Giggs got put through, and we've seen him score from here before. Going to his left, to the goalkeeper's right, he's really in there, and you don't think he can miss. But he can, and he has. And they've got to sit down now. Now, has that disturbed Leicester's concentration? The corner to be taken by Giggs. Cantona's in there. Off the line, and again. First time by the defender, second time by the goalkeeper. Cantona, the player defied. And good... Back up again on the Leicester line, not for the first time tonight. It's very, very tight in there. And again, it's a nightmare for Kevin Paul. He's got to come through his own defender as well as the forward to see the ball. <laughs> this is Philpott. But that was a close thing. Now, look here. Poole comes to meet the corner. Cantona gets a touch. It's going towards the net. There's a clearance <laughs> by the man on the post. I think it might have been Whitlow. And then Poole covers as well. McClare gets it away. Now, then, they've got four against four. If it's played right. Keane, it has been. It's Kanchelskis. It went in front of Mark Hughes as he slid in. And Kanchelskis didn't quite play it right. The goalie was committed, but uh, it was just a bit too well, was it? Or should Hughes have been further forward? You can look at that one of two ways. Short to Thompson. Now Draper. Curling a bit. Decisive finishing. You could also say it sent a wave of relief around Old Trafford. And you might also add that Kanchelskis is now back out on his own as the leading scorer this season. This is number 12 for him. And when a player shoots like that across the goalkeeper and buries it in the top corner, all you can really do is admire it. Leicester may not feel that way, but it needed something special to beat them. And although Paul may have got his fingertips to that, on the hour, it's Andrei Kanchelskis who puts the champions in the lead. Here's Agnew. And it's Whitlow. In it comes to Thompson. Roberts. Draper. A good effort by Draper. Gary Walsh scrambling down to save from Leicester's most expensive player. It has given them a corner, and that means Willis and Wicklow are up. They're shouting City reject at Oldfield, but uh, he's more concerned about getting ahead on this corner. The goalkeeper didn't make it, and Leicester have equalised. Well, number three, Wicklow, is the man to keep an eye on, but this is a nightmare for Gary Walsh. He's come and missed it completely, and Wicklow just tucks it in to make it 1-1.
and Walsh is having a bit of a tough time. He missed one at Chelsea on Monday when Newton scored, and he's done the same here. And there are still a few loitering with intent on the edge of the penalty area. Pallister. Cantona, nice flick. McClare, no. Roberts plays it inside to Draper. And Leicester, if they move... Oh, they didn't. It was a great chance for Draper to just push that to Thompson. To his right, they were away. He went into trouble, gave away a free kick, and the whole picture changes. That might prove costly for Leicester. This is Bruce. And it could do. Cantona scores! Could save Paul. Good stop by the keeper from the young substitute, although I have to say that Leicester and Draper were making their own trouble there. Giggs. Now that's curling for the goalkeeper. Leicester's only away point so far was at Everton in a 1-1 draw. Here they are, 1-1 at Old Trafford. And Leicester will need to keep their shape as United get ever more desperate. Cantona. Oh, the chance for Leclerc, and it's away by Hill. Had a fine match. Corner again. Now it's gig, so it looks like an outswing. Not swung far enough, really, but he's got a second chance. And they're queuing up in there. Canton, oh, well taken by this uh, underrated goalkeeper. Kevin Poole, he's below six foot, but he's done awfully well tonight in the air. They've really peppered him with crosses, but he looks accomplished. Played by Wicklow. This is Blake. And there's some good running going on up front for Leicester here. Draper made room for the shot. Well, that was mighty close, it seemed from here. It was uh, Mark Draper who struck it as we enter stoppage time. And Blake heads it clear. It's going to keep their shape and their common sense here, Leicester City. And not do anything silly, this is Thompson. Remember Oldham in the semi-final being uh, not in quite this position, but you know what I mean. Mind you, Hughes is on the pitch at the moment, so uh, don't end like that. This is Pallister. And what a good result for Mark McGee in Leicester. Old Trafford will be numb with disappointment, but this was an heroic performance by the team threatened with relegation. Some sterling work back there. Those are the heroes, really. The back four players. People like Wicklow who scored the goal. And Colin Hill being congratulated there by colleagues and Willis. They've dug out a real result here. Leicester take a point in their battle to get away from the bottom. And Manchester United drop two, which makes five in the last two home games. So, Mark McGee has already got draws against Blackburn and Manchester United. He's made a solid start at Filbert Street. And here at Old Trafford, Leicester thank their supporters and Manchester United trudge off in disconsolate fashion. A gutsy fight back by City took Man United by surprise, but another penalty miss was to prove costly at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Nolan. To Bright touches it on for Chris Waddle and Waddle with a left foot. Good shot, great save by Kevin Poole. Chris Waddle loves that uh, angle, stroked it with the left foot. The ball uh, passed on to him here from Bright. Just a little deflection there, maybe off Whitlow. The strike was good, the save even better. Chris Bart Williams with the throw to Nolan. through that time, well cut out by Jimmy Willis, but uh, back comes Hyde with a shot, oh, superb goal from Graham Hyde, from what, 25 yards, 
40 minutes into this game and Sheffield Wednesday take the lead somewhat unexpectedly here that wasn't the best of clearances there from Jimmy Willis Hyde picks it up takes his man on and uh, oh that shot going right in the top corner in off the post so Sheffield Wednesday coming forward again not a bad effort there well held by Poole Got both hands behind it Chris Bart Williams trying his luck from some 25 30 yards there hit it cleanly enough but good goalkeeping yet again Thompson oh he's lost out there Graham Hyde in support here Nolan's cross not back in Hyde with a header great save again by Kevin Poole he's really on form this afternoon Leicester City desperate to uh, create something up at the other end. Good head of that, well on target. So here's Colin Hill. A little bit of leaning on there. Whacked away though. By Leicester again. Oh, obstruction surely. The referee plays on. But uh, Blake, blatantly obstructed there. Down goes low, a little push in the back there from Ian Nolan. And the referee points to the spot. A chance here for Leicester City to get on level terms with Sheffield Wednesday. We're into the 78th minute here. Well, Mike Reid of uh, Birmingham had no doubt at all. There goes the nudge on low, he goes down, the linesman flags as well. So a penalty it is and a chance for uh, Steve Thompson. He missed from the spot in the last home game against Liverpool. What can he do here? Oh, he's hit the post! And that won't count. The goal rolled out. Thompson playing the ball twice. And uh, that'll be a goal kick, in fact, for Sheffield Wednesday. Thompson uh, discussing it with the referee, but his first shot hits the post. The goalkeeper didn't get a touch. And Thompson virtually strikes the ball twice. And that, of course, is illegal. A disappointing end to 1994 was followed by a real blow to kick off the new year. The relegation battle at Portman Road was dominated by home side Ipswich Town. Chris Kiwomia gave the Suffolk side the half-time lead. The Foxes did get back on level terms at the start of the second half. A close-range effort from Ewan Roberts made it 1-1. But City's celebration was short-lived. In fact, it took Ipswich just 60 seconds to regain the lead. Debutant Adam Tanner made his mark with a well-struck drive. The home side were determined to give new manager George Burley his first win. And Ipswich wrapped up the points with two further goals. First, a second strike from Kiwomia who found himself in the right place at the right time. Kiwomia again had a part to play in the final goal, 17 minutes from time. This time a cross by the Arsenal-bound winger was finished off by Frank Yallop. That completed a 4-1 defeat for City and meant the bottom club at switch had closed the gap to a mere two points. Round three of the FA Cup had served up a home tie with would-be giant killers Enfield. When you're battling against relegation, a cup tie against a non-league side is bound to cause a sense of apprehension. But on this occasion, Mark McGee's men produced the right result. Hammered away quickly. Picked up by Agnew. Back to his captain. Ball forward, a fairly aimless ball. Thompson to Phil Pot. Good ball from Hell. Finds Roberts who'd moved over on this near side. Oldfield wants it quickly. Shot comes in. Oh, great. A great strike from David Oldfield. Simple move. Started deep. Grayson turned it inside. Oldfield with room. Picked his spot. the 
fancy footwork there from David Oldfield, which uh, the crowd appreciated in a very sarcastic way. And you. An infield break now. With Pye. Willis will get back there. No, he won't. Hello, he's got a chance. Oh, great save from Paul. Brave goalkeeping from Kevin Paul. Well, that really was a golden opportunity. Paul Pot again. Can he get the crossing? No, he can't, but he can win a corner. Which he'll take himself. Good deep hanging cross. Out comes the goalkeeper. Good punch away. Infield break with Pye. Up to Hobson. Now Hilaire. Goes past his man. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. Has he taken it too far? Drills the cross in. Oldfield's back there. Can't really cover. Get it away. Good strong challenge coming in from Whitlow. <laughs> but uh, the referee has already given the free kick the other way. And Kevin Paul will take it. 20 minutes of this second half gone. Leicester City, courtesy David Oldfield, on nine minutes, one. Enfield nil. Good header from Roberts. Nobody there to pick up the loose ball. Good challenge from Hill. Willis across. Wicklow, the way the goal is blocked. First time ball back in. Hobson. Turns it well. Uh, trying to get a corner, I suspect. Threads it in, but uh, pulls alert to the situation. Thompson gets out of trouble well to Willis. He's got Grayson on the far side, just coming into a uh, picture at the top. Into low, to Roberts, he must be offside, he's not! Yeah! The Enfield players look across to the linesman, he kept his flag down, and Ewan Roberts' sixth goal of the season has, I suspect, settled this tie in Leicester City's favour. Crosses in, Roberts with a flicked header. Ryder gets his first touch, but he's not very positive. Thompson. Kerr away with the header. Pye dwells on it too long. Turn of the captain. Good ball, up to Rideout. Well read by Grayson. Low changes his mind, back inside to Oldfield, might try a shot. Tries a one-two with Roberts, oh, and it's... He's missed it. How on earth did he miss that? Oldfield it was who started the move. A lovely little one-two with Roberts. <laughs> Neat little flick. Goalkeeper off his line, Oldfield over his head, and two yards wide. Oldfield again. Back with Phil Pot. Lewis wants it, gets it. Oh, good ball inside to Phil Pot again. Shot comes in! Oh! 
Roberts couldn't quite get on the end of it. Philpott shot, just straight the post. And I think the scoreline of 3-0 would probably be extremely flattering as far as Leicester were concerned. Allowing for the fact they've had a lot of the play, but they've done very little with the possession that they've had. So with 14 minutes to go, it looks very much as if for the second time in eight years, the name of Leicester City will appear in the fourth round draw. Philpott, Lewis, back to Philpott, still has it. Penalty. Well, I thought that that was probably just outside the box. Let's have another look at it. The trip comes. Well, marginal. And Steve Thompson, who's missed the last two penalties, has been relieved of that duty by David Oldfield, I think. Yes, Oldfield's going to take it. over the top well I suppose one could say justice was done you've got the best possible start with the goal after nine minutes which should really have lifted you shouldn't it yeah up till the goal I think we were playing well and once we'd got a goal I think it was oof, you know a little bit of relief and but then we stopped playing all credit to Enfield they come here they've battled hard you know and they give us a good game you know we, we, we you never underestimate a non-league team and they were trying to do the old giant killing act I mean, really, you were on a hiding to nothing from the beginning, weren't you? You knew that, of course. Yeah, you know, the papers have been waiting for us, you know, uh, fall down today. And luckily we haven't done. We've gone into the act. We haven't been in the act for the fourth round, you know. We, we keep missing out and we're there this time. You know, we've worked hard. We'll keep working hard and that'll boost the confidence a wee bit. The second goal really killed it, though, didn't it, with only 20 minutes to go? Yeah, you know, after the second one, I, th I think, to be fair, we'd have got three or four. We, we, we'd have done self-justice. You know, but all credit, you know, they've come here, they've battled away. And, you know, they've, they've tried to turn us over and luckily we've survived. The FA Cup win against Enfield ended a week that also saw the club make a big advance off the pitch. The Fox Fitness Studio, a brilliant new facility costing £280,000, was unveiled. Thirty new jobs have been created by the fitness studio and up to 1,000 members are expected to sign up in the first 12 months. An opportunity for the ordinary fan to train alongside his sporting heroes. Leicester City stars and other leading sportsmen will use the high-tech centre that boasts a full range of fitness equipment, as well as sauna, steam rooms, dance floor, bar and the professional sports injury clinic. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what? What if I was just sweet and derived? With my clothes on, how about that? I'm <laughs> <laughs> coming out of the sunbed. Wow! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. did, did you kill it I did, yeah. Colin, getting through some uh, serious work down the ground now. Yeah, we've, uh, the new gym's been open and the lads have come down and started using it, so it's, yeah, it's good. Now, uh, there's quite a bit of expensive equipment out here. Uh, makes a difference from probably your first days as a pro footballer and the gyms you used to use. Yeah, normally they're stuck in little rooms behind laundries and things like that, and you just get a few loose weights. I mean, now it's like a couple hundred thousand pounds, I think. Now, uh, so what are the lads reckon to it? Well, they're having a look around now, aren't they, as we're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I mean they love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's an ideal opportunity for us to use it. Hey. When you're 70, yeah, Gav. Well, I've always, I've always done this sort of thing. It makes a, makes a difference if you're used to it, you know. I like jogging around the pitch still, and uh, this is my favourite exercise, but we haven't got one of these at the leisure centre I belong to. So it's all very nice to, uh, to come and enjoy these facilities. So. I didn't know you were so good at aerobics. Oh, I've had a bit of practice down the local gym in Longley, where I live. So, 
do aerobics sometimes in the summer when we've got a few weeks off. So, you know, cheated a bit, really. You really do aerobics as part I've of done your that, fitness? I've done, it, I've done it a couple of times, yeah, like in the summer when, you know, we're not doing much, so... Um, did it a couple of times, I had a couple of hours down the gym. Um, the girls down there, it was really good. Now, I presume that was a closely guarded secret. You're going to get into a <laughs> ribbon now, you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't let, let that on, but, you know, it's, uh, it's really hard work, actually. It's, uh, it's really good for your fitness, so, you know, an hour or two in there helps. Now, I think uh, <coughs> you've had a chance to assess some of the lads at aerobics. How did you rate their performances uh, there? Just, some of them just got no style or technique whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what about Coatsy? <laughs> Oh, there's no way he's from Sunderland, isn't he? <laughs> no chance. Now, what do you reckon to this fitness place? I mean, we've seen the lads working out today. Yeah, it's brilliant, really. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, you know, it's some of the best stuff you can get, really. And, um, you know, it's useful for um, the public to use as well as um, myself as well, you know, especially the injured lads. I'll tell you what, I've lost a stone off my arms. Alan, aerobics. Perhaps you missed out on your career when you were playing football. No, they reckon I missed out when I was playing football on my career. Is that what he's trying to say, Macy? <laughs> I, I mean, was thinking perhaps aerobics more suited than to... the midfield dynamo well, that you used to profess to be. You see, if they'd have had equipment like this in the Jurassic period, they'd have put another three days on my career working out with this uh, gym stuff. But it's nice to see, isn't it? Bill Shooter, tremendous, you know. What is it? Nearly 70, Bill. Does my runs at the end of the season. He, does his, he says that's his favourite exercise. I've, he's told me, really, it's his second favourite exercise. I can't tell you on camera what his favourite exercise is, but that is actually his second favourite exercise on there. So, But uh, facilities are great, aren't they? Don't, I think the lads will probably use them. Uh, in between having, you know, team talks, they might get a little bit of chance to use the facilities, but uh, tremendous setup. And uh, uh, can we count on you using them, Macy, or what? Well, I've had my grade A and my fitness training already. Now, Birch, people used to talk about your lack of first touch. You've got a bit of rhythm out there in them aerobic oh. sessions, haven't you? Well, it's, it's, you know, if you've got it, you've got to flaunt it, Macy. It's as simple as that. I mean, I was, uh, I was overcome out there. It was just uh, you never lose that sort of touch. It was like being down at uh, the Mecca in the 70s. It all came back to grannies? me there. Well, even grannies then, I was old enough to remember grannies on London Road. VIP cards came out. Now, the lads are taking me down the Crystal Saturday night because they were so, uh, you know, they are so impressed with the footwork. But as you say, you never lose it. I mean, Frank Worthington used to try and do it, but uh, you saw the birds there. 20 years on, brought tears to your eyes. Well, the lads... I think they were laughing. It brought tears to their eyes. Now, I gather now you've, you've done a little bit of aerobics, a little bit of workout in the gym. You're off yeah. now for your personal fitness assessment, I understand. Yes, there's no problem on there, Macy. They've just got a problem finding the heart. <laughs> this is the only thing. I don't know where it is. I've been looking for it for years, so I'll be quite uh, you know, impressed if they do find the heart and they can get my cholesterol level. This is another thing, because all these fatty foods I'm eating are no good for me. I'm going to be on a strict non-fat, non-drinking diet from now on. <laughs> and I'm sticking, as Bill says, red wine, that's good for you. Our director knows what's good for him. Look at, look how well he looks at 70 years old. Mind you, I'm 90. But, uh, Around the what? <laughs> Around the Derby. <laughs> Derby Kelly Belly. Uh, is so. But no, tremendous facilities. It's the first time I've seen them, and I can honestly say it'll be the last. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just the players getting fit at Leicester City, is it, Tom? No, it certainly isn't. I mean, we believe in everything to be fitness from the top to the bottom. If you've got a fit team out on the field, you've got to have a fit management to back it up. And I'm determined that that should start right at the very top and go right the way through the club. Even if we've got some of the older members of the board who already see, we've already seen doing their stuff. And I'm very glad that I'm not having to do mine in front of all you lot. But I can assure you it can be done. And I'm looking forward to being the official first member of the health and fitness lot. So we're looking forward to that. I think it's almost the final piece in the jigsaw for the carling stand, isn't it? That's right, yes. It is the last bit of the, uh, the stand that's to be completed. And we're very happy to have such a tremendous facility here that we're all going to enjoy using. So it is the final brick laid, as it were, in the building of the stand. And Steve, I think uh, there's some pretty impressive equipment out here, isn't there? Techno Gym is the world leader in uh, supplying CV and resistance equipment. Um, we supply people like IAX and AC Milan, and if it's good enough for Mark Ambassador, it's good enough for Mark Draper. <laughs>
Now, uh, we've had all the players in here. They seem to certainly be enjoying it. You're obviously bracing yourself for a big response from the public as well because it's not just aimed at top sportsmen, is it? It's very much aimed. It's, the equipment's capable of dealing with top athletes and it's also capable of dealing with the reformed couch potatoes. If it's been there for Christmas, put on a few pounds and want to get rid of it, this equipment will suit them down to the ground as well. It's very adaptable. And we've set the price scale so much that it's very affordable for everybody. Now, Tom, I think you're definitely not a reformed couch potato, are you? No, I reckon I'm <laughs> fairly fit, and I'm going to have to live up to that, aren't I? I was uh, making use of the club here, which I'm going to do. But we're looking forward to everybody coming down here to the Carling Stand because it is part of the community of Leicestershire, and we at the club are looking forward very much to seeing lots of people coming down here, and they're going to see me on the kit, that's for sure. Fox Fitness is the final facility to open in the £6 million Carling Stand complex. Clearly the club has come a long way on the commercial front. The missing ingredient is a winning team to match. Frustratingly, survival prospects were not helped by the Premiership basement battle with Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. Now a counter-attack to Mark Draper. Humphrey had come across the cover. Draper. Pitcher. Palace covering so well for each other. Humphrey now coming forward on the left of midfield. What is going on? Lovely ball out to Darren Pitcher. Ross coming in again, looking for Nadar. A goal for Ricky Newman. The famine is over. Ricky Newman, the man to do it. Palace one, Leicester nil. Armstrong, how he'd love a goal. Setting up Southgate, too high, chance for Endar, number two for Palace. George Endar scores in the Premiership. He's delighted and he took his chance well. With 18 matches remaining, the Foxes clearly had it all to do to extend their life in the Premiership. Five points adrift at the bottom and 12 points short of moving out of the relegation zone. New boss Mark McGee was already running out of time. He needed something special to spark a great escape. The story continues in Volume 4.